Welcome to part three of my Oculus Quest emulators series. In part one, we looked at emulators that you could sideload onto your Oculus Quest using SideQuest. These SideQuest emulators are designed specifically for the Oculus Quest and once they've been sideloaded, you don't need a computer to play them. Then in part two, we looked at Android emulators that would run on the Oculus Quest. So unlike part one, these Android emulators aren't specifically designed for the Oculus Quest, but they also, once sideloaded, could be played on the Quest without needing to connect to a computer. But now in part three, we look at those emulators that you need to connect to a computer in order to play. In this video, I'll be using an Oculus Quest 2 headset connected to a computer, and the computer will be running the emulator. But if you do own another tethered VR headset, then that will probably work with these emulators also. Now, just before we go on, I'd just like to mention this video isn't intended as a guide, so I won't be showing you how to set up and get these emulators working, although many of them are fairly easy to set up. What I will be showing you is a brief overview of each of these emulators, along with a summary and my thoughts, so that then once you've been given that overview, you can make your mind up if one takes your interest, then you can go follow it up and check it out for yourself. So with that, let's jump in. Now the first emulator I want to give a very quick mention to is PPSSPP VR. This is a PSP emulator that allows you to play PSP games in virtual reality. And I'm talking full virtual reality. So you're going to be inside the game, not just looking at these games on a flat screen inside your headset. So why am I making this a very quick mention? Well, that's because I couldn't get it to work. So for whatever reason, I couldn't get it to work with my Oculus Quest 2 but I thought I'd still include it in this list in case you're interested in giving it a try yourself, you might have more luck than me. And so I'm going to include the link to this emulator in the description below if you want to check it out. Now the first emulator that I actually did get working and what is perhaps my favorite emulator on this list is 3D Sen VR. Sen is NES spelt backwards, so it might not surprise you then that this is a NES emulator. You will have to pay to access the full version, but there is also a demo that you can try before you buy. You can play using your Oculus Quest controllers or another input device like a gamepad or keyboard, depending on your preference. So let me jump into a game so I can show you what's so special about this emulator. So here I am playing Arkanoid. You'll notice that it looks pretty much like regular Arkanoid, except it's not. It's been made 3D, so you can view this from any angle and you get this 3D perspective. And that's what's so special about this emulator. It converts your favorite NES games into 3D and allows you to play them in VR. It also features full light gun support. So the NES had its own light gun, it was called the Zapper, and with games like Wild Gunman that support light guns, you get this 3D model of the Zapper that you can move using your motion control. So it's pretty much like the real thing. Now this emulator is also super easy to use, probably the easiest to use out of all the emulators that I feature on this video, but it does have its drawbacks. In order to get this 3D effect, the game needs to be supported. Now there is a fairly sizable list of games that are supported, and this list is growing, but that does mean that you won't be able to play any NES game and get the same 3D effect. It's only select games that will be able to do this. And in case you were wondering, there are also save load states. So this emulator is super simple, a whole lot of fun, and a great way to experience your NES library again in a whole different way. I highly recommend giving it a go. Like I say, you can try out the demo, so you can try before you buy. Our next emulator is MUVR. It is free and currently in beta. Just go to the website, which I'll link in the description below to find out how to get this one. What MUVR does is it attempts to create your childhood bedroom and you can customize a lot of things in this room. For example, I've placed my own posters up that include some of the films and games that I enjoyed during my childhood. 
You can even customize the textures on the ceiling, the floor, the bedspread, just to get the room looking as identical to your childhood room or your dream childhood room as much as possible. There are various menus that allow you to select different systems that you can use, and so these systems range from models that actually look really quite good, like the uh, Nintendo 64, or should I say the uh, Pretendo 64, and the phony PlayStation. But some console models haven't been developed yet, like this Sega Saturn, which is just a generic console shell. You've also got an objects menu that you can use to populate the room with various items from your childhood. You've also got a screens menu where you can select from a variety of different screen styles from the 90s, 80s and 70s, as well as the size of those screens to play your consoles on. Aside from that, there are plenty of settings that you can play around with. I won't go through them all. There are plenty of tutorials online if you want to get further into this, but you can do things like change the time of day outside or turn on room ambience, which means you might hear your mum's voice from outside the room from time to time. This emulator runs on RetroArch, so whatever emulator you can find on RetroArch, you can play via MUVR. And how it works is you have to manually hook up the console to the TV in order to play and you even have to flick the switch and put in the cartridge just like you would do in real life. It's trying to emulate the real thing as much as possible. Now apologies, you might see some lag in this video and that is because my computer wasn't handling it very well as I was trying to play this and record it at the same time, but I can assure you this lag does not exist if you're playing MUVR on a computer that can handle it. MUVR has a ton of features including being able to stream 80s and 90s TV, read tons of video game magazines and play multiplayer via netplay. It also features light gun support and you can play on as many consoles as you can emulate at the same time. MUVR is great and for free it's amazing but there are some negatives, for example it does require some time investment if you want to get the room looking exactly how you want it to look. And one of its best features, the realism element, having to plug in the cartridge, plug in your console to the TV, turn it on, might be a potential drawback for some who will find it a novel experience at first but it could wear thin after a while. So there is a learning curve with this one, but if you're willing to invest the time, you've got a fantastic free emulator experience here that will recreate your childhood memories of playing retro games in a way that you're probably not going to get anywhere else. Now if you're a Sega fan and want a similar thing to MUVR where you get your own childhood room but don't want to go through all the hassle of creating it yourself, then you can check out Sega Mega Drive and Genesis Classics. This has a VR mode where you put in your very own Sega themed bedroom and it doesn't have the same customizability as MUVR but at the same time when compared to MUVR there is minimal setup. But of course this one only allows you to play Mega Drive or Sega Genesis ROMs. And these ROMs aren't free, you have to buy them. You can buy them separately or you can buy them in a bundle. And I think I got the whole lot on special for about 15 US dollars. Now just one important thing to mention, in order to get the gamepad working, I had to launch this one from within inside the headset. So I had to access Steam inside the headset and launch it from there. Otherwise, it didn't seem to recognize my gamepad, which is connected to the computer. So if you're having the same trouble, then make sure you launch it from within inside your headset Otherwise, like I say, it doesn't seem to recognize any control method. So with this emulator, you have your game library neatly laid out on this shelf. You can load save states, you can add mods, and look at any completed challenges for that particular game, as well as leaderboards. So here I'm looking at an online global leaderboard for the amount of rings collected for Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Once you've chosen your game, you can then play it in this sort of cinematic, giant, flat screen mode, or you can play it in a traditional way, in your virtual bedroom, in your fairly small, I would say 14 inch television. This emulator also includes some extras which I've touched on previously, so things like achievements, challenges and leaderboards. Achievements and challenges are fairly similar, and it's kind of like earning a Steam badge. You'll have a particular task that will give you for a particular game and once you've completed that task you'll get some kind of badge. 
There are a few screen and emulator options to play around with, including a mirror mode which reverses the screen to give you a whole new gameplay experience. It also has online multiplayer options, and if it can't find someone to match you online with straight away, you can play a game while you wait. Overall, I can recommend this one if you like your Sega Genesis and want something a bit like MUVR but don't want to spend the time setting things up, you can just jump in and play straight away. Next up we have new retro arcade Neon. This lets you emulate your favourite arcade games in a retro realistic 80s or early 90s inspired arcade venue. This emulator front end supports over 30 arcade cabinets, 18 console cartridges and 10 handheld games that you can then set up and play using your own personal ROM collection and the arcade builder tool that comes with this game. There are also over 10 mini games included, games like darts or basketball or bowling. But don't get too excited just yet because out of all of the emulators that I feature in this video, this one takes the most to set up by far. The arcade doesn't come complete and so there is this whole guide you can get on Steam that shows you how to set your own arcade up. And while in some ways this level of customization is great in that you can make the arcade look exactly how you want it to look. If you don't have the time or the patience to learn how to do it, then this is probably not the emulator for you. Although there is something called an arcade manager that you can download which supplies all the artwork so all you need to do is supply the ROMs and it will automatically populate the artwork for the cabinet so if you do get this one then I'd recommend getting this arcade manager as it will make your job setting up your own arcade a lot easier. Now just another thing about this one which I found personally myself to be a drawback was the control scheme so I had to use my Oculus Quest controllers to get onto an arcade machine then once I was on the arcade machine I'd use my gamepad to then play the games. It wasn't the worst thing in the world but it did mean I had to continually swap between my Oculus Quest controllers and my gamepad. Other than that if you're willing to put in the time and effort this is a fantastic front end for your emulators which allows you to build your very own dream 80s retro arcade and you can't get much more awesome than that. And finally on my list I have the Dolphin VR emulator. This is a GameCube and Wii emulator with VR support and it's completely free. Like many of the other emulators in this list you have to supply the ROMs yourself. And this is a good emulator, there are a ton of options available. So there are two types of options, there's the options for the actual emulator itself and then you have the VR options that relate only to the VR component. Now, having lots of options is a good thing in one way because it means you can adjust a lot of different things and tweak it till it's just right. But on the other hand, it does make things a lot more complex. And like with many of the other emulators featured here, there is a bit of a learning curve with this one if you want to get the games running just right. Now, when I say this is a VR emulator, I mean that it brings you into the GameCube or Wii game itself. So you've got a full 360 view of the game as if you were inside it. It's not just a flat screen. But just to bear in mind that these games aren't made for virtual reality. So there'll be a lot of times, for example, when I'm playing Zelda, that a cutscene comes along which isn't optimized for VR. And you'll see some strange artifacts. Plus, it'll probably make you feel a bit sick. Such as in this cutscene where I'm looking from the fairy's perspective and flying along at fast speed it really doesn't work well for motion sickness. That being said, there are some games that work really well, such as Metroid Prime, but knowing which games work well and which don't work so well is going to be a bit of trial and error. There is some information out there, such as this list, which I'll link in the description below, which shows some games that people have tried and tested, but a lot of it's going to be you having to play around and experiment just to find out for yourself. And so that is a potential drawback. But another cool thing about this emulator is if you can find an N64 game that's been cracked to work on the GameCube, then sometimes you can also play that N64 game in full virtual reality. So here I am playing Star Fox 64, and it actually works really well in virtual reality. Thank Fox! I thought they had me. If you've liked this video, do remember to hit that thumbs up button. And if you think I've earned it, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to be kept up to date with everything coming out of this channel. Thank you for watching as always, and I'll see you in the next video.
It sound right, boy.